Grab your build manual because it's time to start building. I hope you're as excited as me. In this video we're going to assemble the chassis of the car as shown on pages 6 and 7 of the build manual. The chassis is the core of the car and is what everything else is going to attach to. It also provides protection to the driver if they were to be involved in an incident, so let's make sure we do the bolts up nice and tight. The only tools you're going to need are spanners and allen keys, so with all that said, over to Steve, our master builder, who's going to show us how it's done. So to get started on our build, we need somewhere to work. So for us, we've chosen to actually use a couple of fold out trestles and we need to make sure it's not going to fall off the trestles. So what we're going to do here is use some cable ties to hold it down. If you haven't got trestles, you might want to put it on a small table or somewhere similar that supports it. But bear in mind, you will need to work on the underneath as well. So now we have our chassis floor pan in position, ready to work on it. What we're going to do is start on page six of our build manual by positioning the front support hoop. Um, I have that down here ready prepared and key to note here is this tab on top of the hoop here should be towards the back of the car and placing that over the chassis we need to find the holes on each side of the car and get those lined up as you can see just down here to connect our front chassis hoop to our floor pan we're going to be using nuts bolts and washers so first of all we place one washer over the bolt our bolt with washer through the hole on the other end we want a washer and then a nut with these nuts they have a little plastic ring in one side that goes away from the washers and then just tighten that up finger tight and we'll repeat that around the rest of the part. Whoa, 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 hang on a minute. I still don't understand why we're using washers. I mean, they're so difficult and fiddly to put on the bolt. To help answer that question, I've designed a little experiment that we can do together. In front of me is a normal water bottle with a bolt tied to it on one end, two pieces of paper with a hole in, two washers, a nut, and then tools to do the nut and bolt up with. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and hang the bottle from this piece of paper and we're going to do it with a washer and without a washer and see what happens. So I think I'll set up without a washer first because that's clearly just so simple and easy to do. So just like a joint on our goblin chassis we have the bolt going through the plate or in this case a piece of paper and then on the other side we have a weight attached to it which will simulate a load. Now, if I lift this piece of paper up, surely the bolt is just gonna stay in the plate and nothing bad's gonna happen. Ah, that's not good. Okay, maybe we should try it with washers and see what happens then. So, a quick reset. And we're ready to go again. As you can see, we have the washer on both sides clamping on this piece of paper. And if we lift it, hopefully it will hold this time instead of breaking. Look at that! That's amazing! It's actually supporting the full load of the water bottle. So why does adding washers help? Well, to answer that, we need to think about what the washers are doing. When it was just the nut and the bolt, there was very little material supporting the weight of the bottle. This means when the paper was lifted, the bolt was able to pull through the material because there was very little supporting it. By adding washers, we've increased the surface area that the joint is acting upon, and that means there's more material available to support the load. So when we lift up the bottle, all of that load, instead of going straight through a small area, is being spread across the whole area of those washers, and the piece of paper is able to support the weight. And this is also what's happening on your chassis. When you use washers, you make a stronger joint, and a stronger joint is a safer joint. So, definitely worth noting, make sure you use your washers because they are really important. Now, maybe I should apologise to Steve for doubting him, 
Ah, anyway, to the build video. So the next part on page six of our build manual is to get our rear hoop fitted. As you'll see, I've got it positioned here already. Here we've got the word front in the right location, pointed towards the front of the car. And the next step then is to get our nuts and bolts and washers out. And exactly as we did with the front hoop, get this one fitted. Bolt, washer on the bolt, through one of the holes, put another washer on, and then put the nut on and tighten up finger tight. And that's our rear hoop finger tight. So the next step on page six of our build manual is to attach the side supports. Same nuts and bolts as we've used before. So pop a washer on your bolt, line up your holes. Or another way to do it is actually put your bolt through the piece and then use it to find the hole in the chassis. And a washer on the other end of the bolt and a nut. It's important to use the right size nut and bolt in all cases because if you use the wrong ones, at some point later in your build, you'll be short of something and repeat that again. So that's those two done up finger tight. And this piece will sit here and slop about for a moment, but shortly we'll add the top rail that comes along here and attaches to the two hoops and to this side support. I can go around the other side now. So we're on to page seven of our build manual now, which is further assembly of the chassis. And the first two parts that we're going to place are these top chassis rails. And I have those here. And you'll see these are long bars with a flat plate sticking up at what is the rear end. And notice that the flat plate is on opposite sides. That's because these two parts are handed. And so you need to make sure that the flat plate piece goes towards the center of the car as I have them here and roughly place them on line them up with the holes in the top of the uh, hoops at front and rear and you'll find that the side support holes line up as well and as we've done before we're getting used to this now let's have bolt washer down through the hole. What I'm going to do this time actually is just put a washer on each bolt, drop it down through the hole, because that helps keep the part in place. And we'll do it at the front here as well. Always remembering your washers. We'll take our bolt with washer on the side supports and then a washer on the other end of the bolt and our nut. Finger tight again. I can go around the other side now and repeat that again. So I'm just coming around to finish adding the last uh, nuts and washers to the bolts on the front here so that we have finished doing up, well finger tight doing up our top chassis rails and attaching them to the front and rear hoops and both of the side supports. The next step on page 7 of our build manual is to fit these two front supports that come out from the uh, top of the front hoop down to the front curved part of the chassis. Um, I have them sat on top here. Usefully you'll notice that on each one there's a stamped letter L and on the other one R indicating left and right. 
Now, which is the left and right? Well, whenever we're dealing with cars, it's always the case that the left and right is as if you were sat in the car facing forwards. So here's our front of the car, here's our left, which will be this one, which I can place in position here. And on the right hand side of the car, letter R, placed here. Same size, washer onto the bolt, down through the hole, have another washer and a nut, and that comes up underneath there. Finger tight as always. Now, we're gonna change our fixings now. I don't know if you can notice that we have what are called captive nuts set into the chassis around the front here. Getting the positioning of these right, smaller bolt and washer, and simply drop them down into the hole where there's already a pre-threaded captive nut and we can screw them in a bit by hand, keeping them just finger tight still. There you go, that's our front supports in place. The final piece to assemble on our chassis uh, on page seven is this centre support plate that goes between our two front supports. Um, different uh, nuts, bolts and washers on this case, a little dome headed washer with a hexagonal hole inside rather than a hexagonal shaped top that we've been using before. But always, as before, a washer on there first. This plate then sits underneath your two front supports and get the holes lined up, hold that in place. Very often easier to have a helper to do this one, but uh, I've practiced before, so hopefully you can get it right. We're going to talk about why we've only done these things up finger tight. Um, we can see things flopping around quite a lot. If this is all tightened up, it may be we've tightened this into a position where these holes don't actually line up. Um, and so the reason we do things finger tight is so we can get a complete assembly, get all the holes lined up before we then tighten everything finally. So that's everything now finger tight and the outline of our chassis is starting to look like a car it's fantastic so this is all loose and rattly at the moment what we've got to do is tighten up all of our bolts our nuts and bolts of which there are 32 so far if you've been keeping count so simplest way to do up nuts and bolts is to place a spanner of the right size 13 millimeter on this side in this case on your nut and then on the other end take another spanner the same and start tightening up now this is a very slow process because every time i do part of a turn i've got to take it off turn it around again so i might prefer if you've got this keep your spanner on the nut a socket with ratchet so i can actually do this and you'll see it's much quicker and it's all really rattly while we're doing this there we go that's the first one done as we start tightening things out the rattling should reduce and if you've got anything left rattling at the end you maybe missed something so i'm going to whiz around this now and uh, get lots of stuff done up Now we change tools to our Allen key. This is a three millimeter Allen key for these ones and a eight millimeter spanner on the back. And um, with these we can just wind around.
And then when you think you've finished it all, it's a lot quieter, it doesn't rattle for much. But actually if you give it a shake and there are some rattles, and I found this, some rattling in front here, it tells me I've missed doing up these two bolts to the front. So, there's our almost completed chassis. We'll start adding other bits to it shortly. Um, have a go, get on, enjoy yourselves and have great fun. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power Project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe, pretty please. Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.